God gave all men all earth to love, but since our hearts are small, ordained for each, one spot should prove beloved over all. That as he watched creation's birth, so we, in godlike mood, may of our love create an earth and see that it is good. You know, that might apply to anywhere. Oh, I know Kipling meant Sussex when he wrote it, but that's because he lived in the county at Batemans for so long. But well, if he'd lived somewhere else, Somerset, Devon, my own county of Dorset, anywhere, north, south, east or west, he'd have said very much the same thing. There's something about your own county, you know. It's yours, all yours. If you're born in Sussex, then Sussex is the grandest of them all. It's quite near London, but somehow it hasn't really got spoiled. In parts, perhaps, but not everywhere. Places like Lewis jog along just the same. Jog isn't quite the right word to use, perhaps, when it comes to firework night. It's a Sussex tradition, this, to have a big do on November the 5th. And the rival societies make Lewis one of the biggest. High jinks indeed. Lewis has known quite a lot of them. George IV spent a bit of time around here, staying, they say, in Southover Grange. And while most of the stories they tell about him are probably untrue, I've got a sneaking admiration for him, especially if he could drive a coach and four down Keir Street. It's a lot steeper than it looks. Believe me, I walk up it. I know. Then there are the castles of Sussex, Bodium. Just what everybody thinks a castle ought to look like, right out of a picture book, ruins, moat, and all. And then Arundel, home of the Dukes of Norfolk, the hereditary Earl Marshals of England. And Amberley, what a castle to look at, to paint, to love. And the village of Amberley. Sussex has got the picture book stuff all right, it's all so restful and friendly. And if you want a restful day, what better way of spending it than on a Sussex green watching a cricket match? Real cricket, played for enjoyment. It's thirsty work, old boy. And that remark leads me quite naturally to my favorite village band from Burwash, known locally as the Thirsty Eight. There are more than eight of them nowadays. That must be because no self-respecting county could exist with only eight thirsty men. <laughs> Sussex by the sea. Ah, oh, there's a tune for you. We plough and sow and reap and mow, and useful men are we. Useful men they are too, these men of Sussex, where many an old craft is carried on. Years ago, some of the great ships of England were built of Sussex oak. Drake may well have sailed with Sussex timbers creaking beneath him. Today, they still build ships, little ships, the old way by hand. And my friend, the blacksmith, Sep Bud, Sep, Sep indeed. 
What a way to treat a lovely rolling name like Septimus. Septimus, redolent of the countryside and of the past. Sep indeed. But I suppose it's typical, typical of the informal friendliness of Sussex. It's also pleasantly little, so that you feel you can get hold of it and be a part of it. The churches, the cottages. Yes, it's a very pleasant county. And if you aren't a countryman, if you come from the towns and want a seaside holiday, well, Sussex can give you that too. As I said earlier, if you're born in a county, well, it's yours. And they're proud to be born here, these men of Sussex. So proud that they sing about it. Oh, the men from Sussex. stand or fall for Sussex all right. From the east to the west, from the north to the south, they're proud, proud to be of Sussex, proud to be from the finest county in England. But so are the men from Somerset. Theirs too is the finest county in England. The very idea that there is any other county makes them shudder. Everybody from Somerset knows the stupidity of even thinking that there could be one comparable. Yes, Somerset, a grand county, with villages like Dunster, with a castle on the hilltop and the yarn market below. That's picture book stuff too. I love Dunster. It's got something. I don't quite know what. I suppose it's peace. The men of Somerset sing that they're ready to fight for queen and country, and they will too, and none better. But you know, if everybody lived in peaceful places like these, I'm sure there'd be no more wars or anything like that. How could you fight anybody with a mind full of the sort of atmosphere that these pictures create? Somerset has a lot of lovely place names too. Names which remind us of the quaintness of the past. Names which tickle the imagination. That's my favorite, beer. But what's water good for? Why, bathing, of course. Yes, you've guessed it, we're in Bath. Reminding us of Dickens, and Bonash, and Baths. The Romans took the waters here, and today, many convalescents still come to enjoy physical rehabilitation. And what a place to be rehabilitated. It does the mind good as well as the body. Bath has grace. A graceful city with graceful buildings and, oh, well, I could go on like this for ages. I love it. Somerset is something else I'm very fond of, too. Cheddar cheese. You know, you can watch these processes of manufacture quite apathetically, but when the thing is finished and cut, mmm, it's beautiful. Apathy departs and glorious participation takes its place. Gorging cheddar. Well, that leads us quite naturally to cheddar gorge, doesn't it? Majestic awe-inspiring and full of trippers. Just look at Cheddar Village. What a way to treat a lovely spot. I prefer Barrington, where the Reverend Top Lady wrote my favorite hymn, Rock of Ages. That's the rock, and 
And there's the cliff where he sheltered from the storm. Well, that's an old too brief glimpse of Somerset. Too brief, I'm afraid, to do it real justice. The men of Somerset are proud to be of Somerset, the greatest county of them all. But stop, does someone disagree? We, the good people of Biddyford, do challenge any man to prove there is a better country than Devon. Glorious Devon! Coombe and a tall green meadow and the lane of birds on the waving bough. Beetling cliffs by the surging main, rich red loam for the plough. Devon's the fount of the bravest blood that braces England's breed. A maiden's fair as the apple bud, and her men are men indeed. When Adam and Eve were dispossessed of the garden hard by heaven, they planted another one down in the west. Twas Devon. Was a devil, glorious devil. Devon, glorious Devon. You ask a Devonshire man and he'll tell you all right. Devon's the grandest county of them all. Wasn't Devon the home of Drake? The home of that greatest typification of the British character, the Bulls on Plymouth Hoe? Let the Armada wait. Let them all wait. We'll do the job when we're ready and we'll do it properly. Devon's history is dauntless. Exeter, bombed, blasted, but untroubled. Plymouth, bombed, blasted, and rebuilt. Courage. That's what Devon has, real courage. A history of courage and seamanship. The war proved that the former qualities endured the centuries. The latter, well, think of Brixham and the little ships which sail in with a hard living won from the angry seas. It does you good to watch them swinging the catch in with so much assurance. Wonderful sight. But when those not of Devon think of Devon, what do they remember? Well, there are the moors, magnificent in their very bleakness, giving an impression of isolation and mystery, almost frightening in their sheer starkness. And the other thing they think of is carpets, Axminster carpets, beautiful, colorful things, Indian, Persian, Give me the really British patterns and colors of the Axminster. Oh, made by machines nowadays, but still real carpets. It's hard to see Devon from a car. The hedges are too high. You can go for miles and not see views like this. Devon has everything. Romantic waters, palm trees in Torquay, and donkeys in Clovelly. The streets are so steep that even the hardiest thinks twice about coming home with the milk. But the donkeys are there, giving joy to the kids and charm to the village. I'd have to walk. They're only allowed to carry about nine stone, and just as well. Even with kids on their backs, they apparently need a friendly shove up behind. Yes, as I said, Devon has got most things, even Blackpool Sands. Quite a contrast from you know where, deserted and beautiful. But to a Devonshire man, it's got even more than most things. It's got everything, with a capital E. You know, I'm a Dorset man, and I've been singing the praises of three counties which aren't my own. But that doesn't matter. I'm a countryman. And I love the country. Of course, Dorset is the best to me, just as Devon is the best of the descendants of Drake. But I'm not a narrow-minded man. I'll join in with the best of them in praise of the others. 
It's a reasonable attitude to take, I always think. Don't you? All England's counties by the sea, from east to west are seven. But the gem of that fair galaxy is Devon, is Devon, glorious Devon. Oh, we come up from Somerset, where the cider apples grow. Oh, we're all Queen's men in Somerset, as they were long, long ago. And when you're wanting soldier boys, and they're fighting for to do, you just send one to Somerset, and we will be up for you. Oh, we're the men from Sussex, Sussex by the sea. We plant and sow and reap and mow, and useful men are we. And when you go to Sussex, whoever you may be, you may tell them all that we stand for, for Sussex.